<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Deep Blue Renegade podcast. My name is Molly, also known as the Deep Blue Renegade, and this is episode number nine. <laughs> um, and today is Saturday, August 23rd. Oh my gosh, I didn't check the date. Lazy bum. It's the 24th. Kidding. <laughs> Yesterday was the 23rd. Surprise. <laughs> so I would like to welcome you guys to this week's show. Um, first off, I would like to thank the um, people who voted in the um, hand spun pattern selection thread. <laughs> <clears throat> um, unfortunately, the results are ambiguous. Um, so there is a three-way tie with four votes apiece for um, Age of Brass and Steam, Dinner in Paris, and 77, 28, or 28's Big Sister 77. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. Um, I suppose that I can leave the thread open for a bit longer, and if anyone hasn't had a chance to vote, or anyone wants to change their vote, I might... Um, <laughs> Um, that, um, that hopefully this tie will be broken. I might end up putting out a, a little call for help in, in a couple of other groups that I'm in to help figure out what I should knit with it. Oh, and here's the first game. <laughs> so this is, um, this is the yarn in question. Um, and it is so happy oh my gosh um but spending's later so <laughs> throw that back down in the pile okay this week and probably for the rest of the month i will be drinking um the caribou coffee caribou blend <laughs> I decided to break into the ground coffee first, so. And it, it is a crisis here in my apartment because in order to make this cup of coffee, I had to use the last of a half and half, which means I have to go grocery shopping. <laughs> because coffee is very important. Um, so to hop into the knitting, um, this is my Ashton window sock. Um, and I hardly worked on it this week. <laughs> I, I know, I know I did a little bit, um, because I went to a new knitting group, um, last week, um, and they meet at a coffee shop, and, um, they're pro probably more on that a little bit later, but, so it, it was definitely a fun group, and people that I've met before at the yarn shop, um, so it was nice to be able to um, talk with them and hang out, um, and I'll probably be going to that once I start the process of uploading and whatever else. <laughs> or you guys might end up getting this episode later at night because I have things to do today. <laughs> so it is about 1 p.m. now, so that's the time when my apartment has light and is not the shadow kingdom of darkness. So... Yeah, so I'm just continuing to do the um, lace pattern along one side of the foot. Um, and I don't have any rulers handy, but we'll just use my hand as six inches. I, I still have a couple more inches of foot to go before this first sock is done. I'm, I'm probably not going to finish this in time for the end of um, the knit along that I'm posting in the sock knitters group, but it doesn't worry me. <laughs> this year has been a bad year for socks. <laughs> um, let's see, so I have my blue Hawaii socks, I have um, Kai Mei, I have my Vesper, I have my Vesper socks, I have my String Theory socks, there might be another pair. Oh, there are two pairs. So then I have my Scrappy Basadi, and then I have the pair that I made for Barbara Jean. So, <laughs> um, 
I, I'm probably going to be making socks for other people for a while until I start to destroy the socks I have. <laughs> none of none of my socks are destroyed, so um, it, it's reached sock exhaustion. So that that's sort of why I haven't been working on this as much because it is, well, very portable. Um, my sock knitting mojo has been extremely low this year. <laughs> um, so, what has been getting my knitting time this week? Ah, it is lying in a pile on the floor. Oh, I think I forgot to mention all of the stats for this sock. Do to do before I get that. So, literally things Vesper in the sweet water colorway, size zero needles. The test, the pattern is Ashton Windows by Karen Martin Kepner, and it's so pretty. <laughs> um, so, okay. Socks done. Alright, so what I ha what has been getting a lot of my time has been my rainbow daybreak. Oh, there is black yarn that wants to go along for the ride. <laughs> so, this is the rainbow daybreak. And isn't it massive? <laughs> um, I think from last week, this has grown a couple of stripes. I am now back to the yellow. Um, and an end isn't so, so obviously you can see this guy's massive. So Daybreak, Stephen West, size two needles. I'm using the blue color is Malabrigo Lace in the Azure colorway, and the rainbow is the Shoppable Lace Ball, I believe, in the rainbow colorway, or some number. <laughs> I'm calling it the rainbow colorway. That is why I bought it. <laughs> or actually, this is the Shoppable was actually a gift for my mother-in-law, Joey. So, yay, Christmas presents. <laughs> so, it's coming together. And um, so I have this right now. So the, 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 this is as big as I can make my Shaogu interchangeables. So I have my 75. I have the three longest needles hooked together so that I can do a full wingspan. Um, and then I can wear it with yarn and needles all. And it's looking like a win. <laughs> so uh, obviously once I actually wear it for real, then it will be. But it's looking like it's definitely long enough. Oops. Lace. <laughs> My attached balls and whatever else. So this is looking like, like that, that this is now a good shawl size. Because I've been measuring and I've been waiting and seeing and it's it's there now. So I'm gonna finish or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get halfway through this red and then I'm gonna start the border. So the um the the the, the notepad is charging because I figure I'll probably want to have the directions in front of me for when I finally get to the border. The, the border is very simple. I, I'm excited because once I hit the border, no more purling. Oh my gosh, I'm so sick of purling. <laughs> well, it's just, so last night I was um, knitting at the yarn shop like I normally do on Fridays and um, like I did a few rows there and I was like, oh my gosh, I must have like at least 400 stitches on the needles. <laughs> I have 642 stitches on the needles. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> how, how, how did this happen? <laughs> That's so many stitches. <laughs> um, and let's see, and then every stripe repeat, let's see. It's like you add 16 stitches every stripe repeat to the pattern, which is a lot. Um, so this will become even larger, and the border also has you adding stitches as you go. So this is just going to be massive. <laughs> massive. <laughs> but it's a good size. So... So then it will become a bit longer and more rainbowy and 
it's going to be gorgeous. I'm, I mean, like, once I put it on, like, I put it on before the show to be like, okay, yeah, I can wear this. And I took a picture so I could put it on the blog. And it's going to work. So now I've sort of passed that threshold between, oh, my gosh, I'm halfway there to, oh, my gosh, I'm almost done. Ah! <laughs> I apparently have been incredibly sensitive to the caffeine because I'm just so excited. Or maybe I'm excited about this show. I don't know. I am just excited today. Um, so that wraps it up for the Knitting Works in Progress. I haven't started anything new. Um, I haven't finished anything. <laughs> but I am finishing something. Um, so to go along with going to this new knitting group, um, I was talking with one of the women, um, Gail, um, and we, we had met before at the yarn shop, and she was like, you look familiar. Like, yeah, you do too. What's your name? <laughs> so I, I was talking with Gail throughout whatever the afternoon. And she was talking about blocking shawls for the state fair. And I'm like, ooh, the state fair. <laughs> and then some crazy ideas popped in my head. So I need to clarify with the state fair folks. But I would like to enter Evenstar and my Bohus. Now, I don't know if I've shown the Bohus on the show before. I probably wore it on Joy and Smiles, if any of you guys are also a viewer of that podcast. So, this is what I've been doing. So, when I finish this shawl, or shawl, psh, when I finish this sweater back in October, um, I didn't finish it properly. So I just took all of the many ends and I just sort of slip them around in the floats um, so that, droop, wrong direction, so that they wouldn't come undone and stuff like that. But if I'm entering this into the state fair, um, I need to weave them in for real. <laughs> so what I've been working on this week has been to pull out all of my not woven in ends and weave them in for real. And I probably got um, this much done in about an hour watching a documentary on YouTube. So it's looking, it's looking like it's not that much more work left to be done. That's just so many ends. Um, so the pattern is Dean, and it is a Boha sweater. Um, and the history behind Boha is detailed in the book Poems of Color. Well, actually, I should just put this needle down somewhere. So during the Depression, um, some intrepid women had decided to, um, to help people make money for their families to knit things for sale in Sweden. And eventually it reached the point where it was a big deal and high fashion and like these really gorgeous sweaters and so when it like I knew for a long time that I wanted to make a color work sweater with wool myself um and this is what has resulted so this is um so I changed the colors out um and it took a lot of work to figure out how to substitute the colors, because my first impression for what I wanted to do looked like a crayon box and puked. <laughs> so what I eventually came upon was that I needed the triad of green, pink, and yellow, and that is what brought everything together. And um, because Woolmice is so saturated, I had to, um, so in the pattern it doesn't, it calls for um, my main color was supposed to be blue in the center, but what I found was that I got the contrast I needed by having black in the yoke. And then what I did to tie the black back in was I did, I cast off my sleeves 
and the bottom of the sweater in black to bring it back together again. So it, it's something called tipping, which I learned from Peggy, who's awesome. <laughs> Peggy is probably really happy that I didn't enter this into the Indiana State Fair. <laughs> oh, Peggy, I hurt you. You're so awesome. Um, so this is probably one of the coolest things I've ever done. And because of that, I wanted to enter it in the fair. Uh, this is the front. So, um, and I'm probably going to wash it after I weave in all the ends, but I'll put it on for you guys so you can see. Um, and this is a sweater that I made so that, or I sized it such that, um, this, so it's, well, my size is super washable. There we go. <laughs> um, and this is a sweater that I sized, so um, I have to lie flat to dry. So it is not, or so it's the perfect size for me when I lay it flat to dry, because I the last will my sweater that I did, um, I have to throw it in the dryer. And since this is a lace sweater, this seems stupid and foolish. <laughs> so so th this is a sweater that I have to pad all out and lie flat to dry and all that other stuff. So, so it has this doubled collar, um, beautiful collar work, um, and it, it fits like a dream. So, do, do, do. all right, I'll kneel. So, I ended up adding some waist shaping to give it some shape there, um, and. People are either, <laughs> because of the color scheme, because it's like 80s video game colors, <laughs> people are either fascinated or repulsed. <laughs> but I adore it. It makes me happy. Or I've, <laughs> I, I've had many reactions from this sweater, but it is an amazing thing. Oh, and the other thing about Bohas, which is different than... Fair Isle in general, which I'll just bring this close, is that um, the colors are sort of blended together because they incorporate curl stitches in the color work. So, like, for example, all of the orange in this is incorporated as pearl instead of knit. So it gives it a, a very different look. Um, when I was swatching, I didn't do the pearls, I just did the straight blocks of color as knit. Um, and it was interesting to see the sweater come together and be like, wow, that's, that is different. Um, and so the only thing that I could think that they could dig me on was improperly weaving in ends. And um, if they just don't like the colors, I think. But I think the colors work awesome. <laughs> it, it, it probably isn't a timeless color combination. <laughs> um, as, as some color combinations are. <laughs> but I think it's amazing. So I'm, I have high hopes for this. This is the coolest thing I've ever made. <laughs> um, so I'm going to call call the New Mexico State Fair organizers um, and figure out what's up with their entry form. Because I, if I have to choose between entering things, I will enter the Bohus over the Even Star. But if I can enter both and it's for free, I will enter them both and it will be awesome. I, I'm not going to enter socks because I've worn all my socks. And I don't think I'm going to finish my um, Ashton window socks <laughs> in time for the fair. Um, and I, I really think you need to have your garments in peak condition. And you know what? I wear my socks all the time. I'm part of my socks. You can tell that they're aging. So that's the story there. And that's been taking a decent amount of time. I'm like, ah, like, uh, weaving it ends. Uh, but. It's fine. <laughs> um, 
it's good to be doing it right now. Um, so, let's see. What is next on the agenda? Next on the agenda is spending. So, a funny thing is that it seems like every Monday night, I get in my head that I have to finish something. And I don't know why. I would rather sleep. <laughs> but I, like, I don't know. I'm just driven. I, I need to finish something. And this Monday, that was the second, um, that was the second third of the, the second game for my gnome spawn. So this guy here is the first half. This guy here is the second half. Um, it's, it's hard to tell at the moment how consistently I've spun them. That'll come out in the plying. But this is... Hold out my knitting eyes. So that this is where I stand right now. Um, and it is beautiful. It is gorgeous. Um, and now I'm halfway there. <laughs> More than halfway there. Um, because I, I sort of think of it this way, that in the spinning, you have how many parts for how many plies you have, and then you have another part for the plying them all together. So this would mean that since I'm doing a three ply, I've gotten two plies done, then I have a third ply, and then the plying. And so that is going to take about the same time as the spinning, or I assume it will. Um, so done, happy. Um, I would have probably slept <laughs> instead of finishing it, but whatever. And um, I did a little bit of spinning every day this week to get this much done on the third and final ply. Um, I weighed it the other night and I still have a little bit more than an ounce to go. Um, so when you split a braid into thirds, or a four ounce braid into thirds, it turns out that each third is about a um, ounce and a third. Math, yes, four thirds. <laughs> so, um, so I still have, um, so that this is one quarter of the thing now. Yes, math. <laughs> so, um, and I'm doing the same thing that I did on my first skein. So what I did was I took my, um, I split what I had split in half and then pre-drafted it all just to sort of speed up the spinning. Um, so I still have quite a bit left at this point. Um, so great big ball of fiber. <laughs> left to go. But it's in my bag. It's getting worked on. Um, I really want to start spinning for socks and to start spinning for socks I need to finish spinning for the shawl. Um, so that is the story there. Um, I don't know if there's anything else to really talk about. So what is it? Gnome Swin Fibers, Shetland Top, and the Sapphire Surprise Colorway. I'm spinning on my Chuck Bennett spindle. Um, and um, it continues on. <laughs> um, I don't know whether or not this has reached the point where I'm like, oh my gosh, almost done, almost done. Um, it might turn out that um, next week I'll have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Especially if I get a case of the, the finishes. <laughs> um, and related to spinning, so um, once again, going back to the Saturday knitting group, um, one of the women, Celeste, had taken a how to spin class um, at uh, Madrona. I don't know. So, so she gave me a spindle, um, which... It's like a hexagon um, with a little hook. It's, it's pretty simple and pretty light, considering. And so, some of the yarn that she had spun in the class. And then she gave me this bag, or bag of fiber. 
So, um, her, her request was that I find someone who wanted to learn how to spin. Um, or so someone who perhaps is new to spinning. Like, I, um, looking at the spindle, um, I'm past that stage of spindles now, so I'm not going to use it. And since I have this bag of fluffy, soft, mysterious fiber, <laughs> I, I am sure that someone would be interested in doing this. So this week I'm going to have a giveaway. Um, I'll start a thread in the group. Um, so one entry per person. Um, you have to be a member of the group to enter. And I will um, do a random number generator next Monday um, to give this away for someone who's interested in having it. Um, I do not have anything about learning how to spin. <laughs> so you, you might end up want, wanting to find that for yourself. But I'm, I, I want to make sure that I follow Celeste's wishes and make this go to a good home um, where, where it'll get used and loved. <laughs> so there you go. Um, and that is the spinning content. I'm checking on the floor to make sure I miss nothing. Re really, it's been a light week as far as <laughs> crafting is concerned. <laughs> um, which is fine. Um, I don't let it get to me. <laughs> but um, I have decided that my next project is going to be a sweater. Um, I, I started to notice that this week when I was leaving the house that it, it was a little bit cool. <laughs> um, and so uh, a, a little bit cool being like 65 degrees as opposed to 90 degrees. <laughs> so um, I am answering the, the siren call of um, oh, well, my silly sweater. So this is my skein of Chim Chim Chimney. Um, and I was thinking when, when I was holding in front of the sweater that they are very similar in color. <laughs> um, so this is a blue with, um, regions of gray, and I'm going to be knitting a Simplicity cardigan by, um, Mariana Rella. Um, so it's a buttonless tie-up sort of thing with, like, loose edges, and it's, pretty and her patterns are well designed so I'm I'm gonna go for it. I forgot to bring the skein in with me to the yarn shop to get wound so while I have a ball winder I do not have a swift. I was thinking about bringing the swift and then I decided not to. So um, just because it will be a nightmare to bring it back without breaking it. Um, so um, in my continuing quest to use my lace yarn and sort of stash down in terms of lace, that, that this is the, the obvious thing to go. Um, and um, as soon as I finish my daybreak shawl, I'm going to start this. Because I guess I'm still in the mood for stocking and knitting. <laughs> for whatever reason. Oh, and, and as an interesting side note, um, since I'm talking about lace down and stuff like that, this is, um, what is it? So, so this is my 50 gram skein of Malabrigo lace, which I haven't broken into. Malabrigo, go, go Malabrigo. And this is how much I've used so far on my favorite shawl. So, um, I will probably just be putting these two together at some point and making something soft and fluffy and lacy and delightful <laughs> um, with it. But um, I, I, I was just really struck by the, um, like I, I was digging through my box of stash to, um, I was digging through my box of stash to pull up the um, Will My Silace and I'm like, oh wow, this is pretty big. I've actually gone pretty far in this. So, um, I haven't weighed my skeins. Um, but, um, I don't know. 
like this guy, 200 grams, this guy, 50 grams. So I've barely made a dent in both of them making this massive shawl. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm still excited about the Daybreak shawl. Oh my gosh, I've passed. I've passed the, the, the slog stage. It's so exciting. So, okay. I think... Wait, no. Um, now, now, now to the, the ending matter. So, contest. I'll start a thread. It'll be fun. Do you want to learn how to spin? I have a spindle and fiber. You can do it. <laughs> um, second thing is that next week, I will be in Kentucky. Um, I'm going on a rock climbing trip with my husband and some friends. So, um, and because the plane ticket was way, 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 way cheaper, I am flying out Thursday and getting back Monday morning. So my plan is to record Monday, um, which will mean I will have a boatload of climbing knitting and plane knitting and um, since I'm going to knitting group three times next week, <laughs> never mind. I'll, I'll, I'll be going to knitting groups three times before the end of the week. No, only two. Whatever. <laughs> um, so because of that, um, hopefully I will have some finished things for you guys. Um, and... I will continue to leave the, the thread open for voting on the shawl pattern in my episode 8 thread. Um, yeah. So, exciting blog advancements. <laughs> um, or podcast advancements. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, um, I'd like to thank you guys for joining me, and I look forward to um, hanging out with you guys next week. So, take care. Bye-bye.